Hello there, welcome Jen Smalls, my name is Boy Waldron and welcome to another inbox review. What we have here is the Kinetic Kits, it's the Harrier GR1 GR3 in 148 scale. Looks like a really, really nice kit, but a quick look at the box art. Well, first off, we can see it is uh, designed by Cross Delta and the um, decals in this are by Cartograph, so we know the decals are gonna be really, really nice. Nice box art that we have here. Um, Kinetics, they have had this Harrier going since 2014, and they've released a bunch of the old ones so far, but now they've got up to the GR1 and the GR3, so hopefully we'll also see in the future things like um, you know the GR7s and stuff and the more sort of modern ones. Um, quick look at the box art as well well hopefully you can see sort of nice um, work going on around here lots of markings by the looks of it um, this kit has the different pieces so you can do either a GR1 or a G are free. Um, the kit costs around about RRP is £49.99 but you can get it in the Genesis model store for 40 Four pounds ninety nine, yeah, forty four pounds ninety nine. So let's open this up and let's take a closer look. All right, just gonna make the bags now. I'm just gonna start showing you straight in there with the surface detail. So if we bring you right in, hopefully what you'll see here is that very sort of, you know, it is quite sort of crisp the detail on here. Lots of recess panel lines, recess rivets and hopefully you can see, you know, it's got quite a fair bit of detail on here. Um, underside of the wings as well, um, nice bit of detail there also. We'll flip this over, nothing really to write home about uh, there. We then have the fuselage sections as well. All right, if we just look at these, I mean, the one thing i do find kinetics i mean they've got good detail and good quality and stuff but they you know now and then you'll find stuff like this you can just see the recess panel line as it goes over to that 90 degree angle it sort of fades a little bit so you, you're probably going to get a want to get a pea cutter out make those recess panel lines that little bit deeper just so it can take a wash right but still the detail is pretty much the same um, across the kit, you know, nice recessed panel lines and rivet work, as you can see. Same with the opposite side, that little bit of fading as it goes around to the 90 degree angle, but still looking pretty, pretty good. Um, inside, we do have a little bit of detail in there, um, an ejector pin mark either side, but I don't think you're really going to see them. A little bit of landing gear here as well with wheels attached. Um, don't normally like that personal like my wheels separately so we can paint the, the rubber um, tires easier but you know they are sort of fixed on there um, all sorts of little bits of detail in and around as you can see some air intake stuff going on here which it does look like you're gonna have the different because we've got four pieces here so I'm assuming one so you can close them and one so you can open them up which is good our different sort of nose cones here which kind of really kind of helps you distinguish between a GR1 and a GR3 so we do have that nicely um, strangely we do have um, two sort of top fuselage wing sections just here as you can see probably something in the instructions maybe to do with GR1 and GR3 maybe um, but you know looking pretty sort of similar I mean they, it probably does have does it I can't really what can we see can we see any differences I'm not quite seeing that we'll have to check that the wing section see if what's different we've got our nice rocket pods here as you can see pretty quite nice detail if we focus you in really sort of cool detail on those rocket pods just there um, we've got some more detail just here really sort of nice rivet work in and around it uh, flipping it over uh, we do have these sometimes you get these ejector pin marks where the ejector pins are really sort of stuck out have come out really um, quite bad but um, that's in a non-conspicuous place and we can cut them back quite easily um, we have some more detail here we have our actual cockpit tub which hopefully you can sort of nicely see. We do have um, buttons and dials and stuff on there, giving us a nice bit of detail, um, a bit more detail there as well. Again, we have um, 
quite a few duplicates of pieces, so we'll have to check the instructions. We have our ejector seat here, which you know that is looking like that's got lots, lots of nice detail. Raised rivets where them do, and recesses, and all sorts of cool, cool detail. Moving along. <coughs> We do have another piece just here. This is um, got some more ejector seats, right? Again, lots and lots of duplicates. We have um, two types of sort of tail sections here, again, for the different variants, right? But we do have nice recessed panel lines and detail, surface detail. Again, we've got another tub just here by the looks of it. Um, I do think they did do a trainer version, so there is. Um, there is there is not this particular kit, but they did a trainer version where there was like two ejector seats and, and whatnot. So it's probably combining a lot of these pieces. We do have our air intakes here, which you know nice and smooth. We do have our instrument display panels, if we can get you in close on them. Nice bit of detail on there also. Really sort of brings that out. Should look rather rather nice. Uh, pretty sure like people have gone off like Eddard and stuff and med, you know. Uh, photo etch um, instrument display panels and all that kind of stuff all right we do have two bags here which I'm going to sort of speed this up and not get everything out because in this bag it's just a lot of um, pylons and um, ooh, wheels and all that kind of stuff so you know I'm not going to sort of get it all out you've kind of got a good general idea then we have a bag full of weapons all sorts of things um, fuel tanks you name it, you know, it has got quite a lot to it. That's what I do like about kinetics. They do seem to, you know, give you a nice amount of weapons because, interestingly enough, sort of like, shall we say, the competitor to this Harrier is Hazegawa. Um, I've done Hazegawa in the past, really, really nice and everything. Uh, tend to not have that many weapons in there. But looking at it so far, I would say, you know, if you want to build Harriers, you know, kinetics is probably the go-to kit. It used to sort of be um, has a goer, but I think we, we, we're kind of leaning towards kinetics now. They just need to bring out those GR5s and GR7s. So as you know, we've got this sort of like most of the set. Um, what you also get is a bit of photo etch, right? Um, nice bit of photo etch, which has things like seat belts and um, all sorts of little things on there. Not a massive amount. It's not quite a gimmick for the kit, but you know, it does give you that nice little bit. Nice to have a bit of seat belt. Um, however, I mean, if you can kind of look at the seat belt, I don't know how well you can see it because the camera does have a bit of shine on it, but not really much detail on those seat belts. So, you know, it's not exactly Eddard level kind of photo etch but you do get some in there. The decals, well, the decals or decals, whatever you want to call them, they are by cartograph, so we know they're going to work well with micro sol and set, and they are going to be good decals. Don't really need to look at them, but just to quickly show you, lots and lots of decals on there. Um, everything looks like it's in registry, not out of um, shape or something. The colors look good. They are looking kind of shiny, but you know that never bothers me at all. Um, and you can, you know, if you look sort of closely, I mean, you can sort of read the small writing that we have on there. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Then we have the good old clear parts, which are just here. Now these clear parts, I mean, looking at them, you know, straight away, they are looking pretty damn good. We could probably bring you in a little bit closer. Real nice and shiny. Uh, you have those detonation cords on the canopy just there, um, even recess rivets as well, just to sort of give you some detail in and around it. Just put it up into the light just to make sure this is all good. Okay, I am seeing like some tiny little scuffs. I mean, you can't see it when I bring it to the camera, but there are some little sort of scuffs, like little scuffs or scratches there, which do look like it's what's happened, maybe a bit of rubbing in the, the box and packaging and stuff. Even though they are separately bagged, um, it does look like they've had a little bit of a scuff. Only minor, which easily, you know, you can sort of buff them out, uh, whether you use compounds or whether you use sanding sticks. Um, not a major big deal, so they are looking good. Now the instructions, <coughs> Right, the instructions, I'm not going to say it's sort of like the best quality printout here. You know, we've got no colour, standard sort of paper, um, you know, 
it is what it is. But you know, we do have a nice description of the Harriers themselves. We do have some colour call outs for Ammo, Vallejo, Tamiya, Humbrol, all these kind of manufacturers of paints there, just to sort of give you a bit of a colour guide. But I never really go on these things. I always search the internet and I just find out what is the best colour match for a Harrier GR1 or a GR3, and I go with that. But it's a little bit of a guide for some of you guys if you don't want to spend the hours that you can spend colour matching things up um, starting off with you know uh, we do get our ejector seat together we do have some call outs for the actual instrument display panel and everything which is cool um, with these harriers you do normally have this thing where the 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 actual engines can be maneuvered in any sort of direction so you can sort of have a vertical takeoff or um, normal sort of flight that kind of stuff so you know that those aren't normally that hard um, getting in the air intakes shouldn't be that hard by the looks of it. Moving on, um, air intakes, yes, you can have these open or closed as well. Um, looks like you can have things like ailerons and flaps and stuff sort of potentially maneuverable. I mean, they are separate, so that m normally means you can move, move them um, a little bit here and there. Um, this is where you're probably going to have maybe slight little issues is this part here the top part of the fuselage section coming down onto the bottom part of the fuselage section possibly a join line here i know with the hazagawi kit when you sort of joined it up it didn't you know it can sort of you know you've got to make sure you test fit these things and it could be slightly out and you might do a bit of filling sanding scribing there um, I've heard this kit goes together very very well so hopefully we shouldn't have any problems but if we do that might need a bit of an attention there um, again we've got the two different nose cones for the two different variants um, moving along try and move this along quite quickly all right landing gear would would i would assume you would you could have up or down landing gear it's not that hard to sort of close landing gear but they don't show instructions how to have them closed um canopy on little bits and bobs probes and all this kind of stuff then we have the weapons i mean looking at it i mean i know they're not so, I, don't know, it's, I know it's in black and white and everything but it does look like it clearly shows you how you're going to get there um, is quite nice i do like it when manufacturers do go off and sort of give you a nice weapons loadout and sort of show you what you can put on what pylon nice bit of description there to sort of have a bit of a study of and decide what you want to do then we have um, um, a load of markings again it's a shame it's all in black and white but we do have the color call outs showing you where the decals are going to go um, yeah it just would be nicer if it was in color and we have a load as you can see markings just here both the gr1 and the gr3 so there it is now it is rp at like about 50 pounds it is about um 44 pounds 99 genesis model store not a bad price for a modern jet there is quite a bit of plastic in there i know it's from 2014 but still it's still got some good life into it in, in it if you ask me the surface detail does look good maybe a little bit of scribing just to make sure your washes can go in there um ejector pin marks don't look to be in bad places doesn't look like there's a any sort of real flash going on with it either um, and it does look like it is better than the Hazagawi kit which is probably the more important thing so if you want to build Harriers this is the one to go for um, just can't wait for them to bring out things like the GR5 and GR7 um, to be honest with you this is probably one of these kits that's on my to uh, bucket list if you if, uh, if you ask me i do want to do a step-by-step -step of a harrier haven't done one yet so it is something i do want to do it's one of them that you know i do want to do and it's going to get done at some point what we'll um, see in the future and it most likely is going to be the kinetics kit maybe when the gr5 or gr7 comes out that might be quite cool um, other than that definitely a big thumbs up and a well worth it kit so hopefully you've enjoyed this inbox review here at genesis models and as always until next time my name is boy waldron this is genesis models and i'll catch you later